There we go. Good morning. Got it. Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome everyone to the uh, Jetty uh, Committee hearing. It's uh, great to have you all here. I'm going to go around and uh, have our, our members of the committee introduce themselves from left to right. I'll say a few words. I'll let the vice uh, chairwoman uh, give an introduction. Welcome everyone and we'll get straight to the agenda. So I'll start to my far left. If you want, introduce yourself, please. Jackie Irwin from the 44th Assembly District. Uh, Bill Bro, 73rd Assembly District. Cheryl Brown, 47th Assembly District. Yeah. Uh, Ken Chu, 8025. Ed Chow, 49th Assembly District. Mike Gibson, 64th State Assembly District. All right, and with us is the uh, committee staff. We have Natalie Vicencia, our secretary for the committee. Jenna Ayub, who is our intern, who's been doing an excellent job with us, uh, Julie King, and our uh, principal consultant, Tony Simons. So with that, uh, I'm going to just start off by saying today's hearing is the second in a two-part series, which is being held in preparation for the committee's more formal review of state programs and consideration of specific legislative proposals. In the first hearing, the committee members were briefed on the California economy, including demographic and economic trends affecting business development. <clears throat> Presentations in this second hearing will focus on the tools that the state has or should have to successfully support California's $2.2 trillion economy. During the course of the hearing, members will hear from state government officials, trade association, representatives, and other economic development stakeholders who have already tasked themselves with these types of evaluations. Each of the witnesses has been asked to share their insights on whether we currently have the right mix of policies and programs to address the challenges of the post-recession global economy and to help foster conditions here in California that supports America's entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, to help us in our work, the committee staff has prepared an extended briefing report as well as a one-pager of our evaluation model. Among other things, the briefing report helps frame the hearing issues as well as provide an overview of the governor's workforce initiative and the range of programs and services offered through GoBiz. And one last housekeeping uh, item, or we have a few. Uh, agenda item three, there will be a public comment period. And as the sergeant has said, you can fill out the speaker card for those who would like to uh, make a few comments. Uh, also, due to the last minute scheduling conflict with the meeting of the Community College's Governing Board, Ms. Vice Chancellor Van Tan Quinlevin uh, is being replaced by Deborah Jones. Deborah Jones is a Dean of Career Education Practices and just as a reminder, the hearing is being televised and there is a photographer in the room who has been given the okay uh, to be here this afternoon and take pictures. With that, I'm going to ask our Vice Chairwoman, Assembly uh, Member uh, Kim, to say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second hearing of the JD Committee. Um, as I have gotten around in my district and toured various industries, it has become clear how much of an impact these state programs and policies we're going to learn more about today uh, can have a tremendous impact on manufacturing and our workforces. So I'm really looking forward to listening to uh, the many of the witnesses who are joining with us, and I'm looking at it as a learning experience. So thank you for being here. All right. a any other members would like to just uh, add a comment before we uh, get into the speakers? To my right, my left, okay. So we'll get uh, going with agenda item number two. We have a couple speakers at this time, uh, Mr. Brian McMahon and uh, Mr. Tim Rainey, if they'll please uh, step forward. Uh, our first panel focuses on several key drivers of the state's economy, the quality of the workforce, and the institutions and systems tasked with preparing that skilled workforce. Among other related topics, uh, the panelists will discuss current initiatives designed to create a better integrated education and workforce development network. <clears throat> Uh, as well as address uh, the needs of workers who face special ch challenges here uh, in California. Uh, Mr. Brian uh, McMahon is a senior advisor to the California Labor Agency. Uh, in his role, Mr. McMahon provides policy and program guidance to the agencies, programs, and departments with particular emphasis of implementation of the Federal Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Mr. McMahon is joined by Mr. Tim Rainey, the Executive Director of California Workforce Investment Board, as the Executive Director, Mr. Tim Rainey assists the Governor in the development of oversight and continuous improvement of California's workforce. Uh, previously, Mr. Rainey was the Director of Workforce Economic Development Program and the California Labor Federation and the Executive Director of the California Workforce Association. Gentlemen, if 
you like to begin your presentation in advance, I'd like to thank you for um, agreeing to split your 15 minutes uh, in your presentation. So. Good morning, Mr. Chair, committee members, and staff. We, we do appreciate the opportunity to participate in today's hearing. And as the very thorough staff briefing document laid out, our state and nation are entering a very interesting period of program and uh, initiative alignment, uh, both in economic development and workforce development. We see these efforts in part reflected in the passage last summer by Congress of the new Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, emphasizing strong alignment of workforce education and economic development programs for the purpose of providing skilled workers to our employers and providing them with the type of uh, workers with a skill set that's going to help them be competitive in an increasingly global market. And we also think that it's extremely important that this convergence of programs provide the type of quality job opportunities to lift more individuals out of poverty while providing them with a pathway to long-term career gro growth. And I am pleased to say at the state level there are now initiatives in place that are fostering real alignment. These efforts particularly connect around the importance of building regional models for planning and service delivery and partnerships that incorporate business-based input that fosters, that fosters education and job training programs linked to high-wage, high-demand jobs. Importantly, these partnerships will include a focus on making education and training programs accessible to disadvantaged populations, including the disabled, veterans, CalWORK recipients, and formerly incarcerated individuals. The California Labor and Workforce Development Agency is playing a key role in implementing this vision of better alignment among workforce education and economic development agencies. In doing this work, the agency closely incorporates and works with its economic development entities. The State Workforce Investment Board that Tim Rainey is executive director for. Uh, the, Qu the QUIB provides policy direction to the state's workforce system of local workforce investment boards. The uh, EDD and its workforce services branch functions as the administrative entity for $390 million in federal workforce funding. The Employment Training Panel, that's the state's primary training entity for incumbent worker training. Uh, the Employment Training Panel makes grants to, to businesses and nonprofit com entities, community colleges, for the purposes of tailoring programs that really meet the specific job training needs of a, of a local area's economy. Uh, we also have the Division of Apprenticeship Standards within the uh, Labor and Workforce Development Agency and uh, a theme running through the uh, Federal uh, Opportunity Act is the expansion of apprenticeship opportunities and, and we see that expansion not only in traditional apprenticeship but which tends to to heavily focus on construction trades jobs, but we also see an expansion into non-traditional non areas that would include technology, uh, advanced manufacturing, healthcare, logistics and transportation, creating new opportunities for individuals to, to move into to those types of uh, uh, occupations. Uh, we have made a strong priority at the labor agency to ensure that all of, all of these departments and agencies work very closely together, both in policy development as well as planning and service delivery. And in fact, we're committed to, to ensuring that this level, this vehicle of uh, alignment within our agency leads to strong connections with workforce partners such as community colleges, Department of Education, the Health and Human Services Agency and its Department of Social Services and Rehabilitation and importantly to our employer community and to, to labor as well as uh, the local workforce development community. The work of this broad alignment uh, 
will particularly be reflected in the state's work on developing a combined state strategic workforce plan as mandated by the, uh, the Federal Opportunity Act. Uh, as we work to improve service delivery outcomes with our state systems, we will be guided by the governor's vision as described in the budget bill chapter, investing in California's workforce. Key among the goals identified in the chapter is improving the state's capacity to lift individuals out of poverty by moving them into and along an education and training pathway that emphasizes again apprenticeship, other types of earn and learn opportunities, attainment of industry recognized credentials, certificates and degrees, and in occupations where there is clear employer demand. Finally, relative to the implementation of the, uh, the Federal Opportunity Act, Act, I'd like to just give you a, a brief sense as to the timeline that uh, the state is working under in terms of implementing this fairly comprehensive new law. In July of 2014, Congress, on a bipartisan vote, approved the uh, Federal Innovation Opportunity Act. In late summer and fall, the U.S. Department of Labor started working closely with states and local workforce investment areas to design a process to implement the new law. In the fall of 2014, the Labor and Workforce Development Agency created a high-level task force comprised of its economic development entities uh, to serve in a coordinating role over the uh, alignment of these different departments as we move forward into implementation. The Workforce Investment Board also restructured itself to create a WIOA implementation subcommittee and a credential subcommittee. And it's at this level where we will start to see the real development of cross-agency types of partnerships that feed into the work that will be accomplished in the uh, integrated plan. In early spring of 2015, and we hear that uh, the regulations are close, the U.S. Department of Labor will uh, introduce uh, over 1,000 plus pages of regulation to, to implement the new federal law. Uh, in the spring of 2015, also, labor agency entities will begin the process of uh, laying out a timeline and building a framework for implementation of the, uh, the new federal law. We'll, we'll also begin a process of uh, building a framework to designate workforce development regions. This is taking the 49 local workforce investment boards that are located throughout the state and bringing them together as mandated by the federal law into a structure that leads to regional planning and regional performance measurement. Uh, it's important for the state to, to build those regions based on sound demographic information. Uh, we're, we're coordinating with the community colleges, with, with EDD's Labor Market Information Division to develop regions that we think have a real supportable basis. But important to this regional designation process is input from local areas. So we, we will have a strong public input process as we move forward to make a final designation somewhere in summer of these uh, regions. Uh, we will also have a draft combined strategic plan ready for public input in the fall of 2015. And that uh, combined regional plan will be submitted to the U.S. Department of Labor by March 16, by March 3rd, 2016. And it's important that this regional plan reflect uh, input from the type of multiple agencies that I indicated before. States have the ability to develop an integrated plan, which are the uh, entities that receive direct funding under the current Workforce Investment Act. Uh, we are expanding that and taking on the ambitious challenge of creating a combined plan that also wraps other entities like CalWORKs, uh, unemployment insurance, uh, employment training panel into that process. 
We will uh, expect that uh, after a multiple federal agency review process that the state will have a combined strategic workforce plan designated by July of 2016. We will ask local, existing local workforce investment boards to submit a local plan that reflects the new law by July 1st of 2016. And in the, uh, the spring of 2017, we will expect that there will be the first regional plans submitted to the state. Over the course of the next few months, the Employment Development Department and the Workforce Investment Board will, will also develop a fairly wide range of uh, program guidance to the, to the local workforce investment boards that will focus on areas like procurement of one-stop operators, uh, the, employment, the eligible training provider list, a number of technical areas of guidance mandated by the, uh, the new law. Uh, fully achieving this type of greater alignment in, in workforce, education, and economic development will, will certainly challenge us all, but our success will help to create a state where there is greater economic opportunity for all citizens. Thank you. Mr. Rainey. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chairman Garcia, thank you very much, and members, uh, for this opportunity to talk. I want to also uh, thank you, Chairman Garcia, for authoring uh, the Opportunity Act implement, implementation bill in the state of California. And for some reason, the bill number has completely gone out of my head. Um, but 1270? Thank you. 1270. <laughs> um, I wanted to spend a, a little bit of time uh, talking about the thinking that's underpinning the current planning process uh, and then uh, touch again uh, on some specific <coughs> items uh, around implementation related to uh, investing in California's workforce, the budget chapter uh, by Governor Brown. Uh, and the Opportunity Act implementation. So we started last year, uh, early last year, uh, on a new strate strategic workforce initiative that builds on the 2012 uh, state strate strategic plan. Uh, and the we, uh, I mean the labor agency, the state workforce board, uh, the employment development department, employment training panel, uh, division of apprenticeship standards, GoBiz, uh, a very close partner with us who's on the, the second panel. Uh, all of us together began to think about how we can really take this, the state strategic plan uh, and the system of workforce education, uh, employment services in the state of California to another, le another level. And we had a few items that were uh, front and center in our minds when we were thinking about what, is, what a system in the state of California would look like when it's working optimally. The, uh, the first is everybody's uh, understanding that the jobs recovery is uneven. Uh, secondly, income inequality uh, in the nation, not just California, is the highest it's been in 100 years. This is according to Janet Yellen, uh, chair of the Federal Reserve. And intergenerational income mobility is declining. Uh, no longer is your, the, the, the greatest determinant of your future income how hard you work or your education level uh, or how much you save. The biggest determinant of your future income is your parents' income currently. Uh, and we're losing ground compared to other Western democracies and other Western economies. Uh, the, the next one is that roughly half of all California jobs now and over the next 10 years, roughly half are what we call middle skill jobs. They don't require a uh, four-year degree, they, but they do require some level of education and training beyond high school. Uh, and that the other 30 percent, well, 30 percent require a, uh, a, a bachelor's degree or more. So fully half of all the jobs don't require a bachelor's degree, but do require some level of education and training. Um, and two of every job openings over the next 10 years uh, are not due to growth uh, and not due to uh, the recovery per se. Two of every jo uh, three job openings are going to be due to replacements, uh, the retiring baby boomers. So. When we meet the skill needs of industries that are driving regional employment, uh, we not only provide new economic, economic opportunities for all workers that we're trying to serve, but we also meet the competitive needs of those industries and those employers in those industries so that they grow and they, they create new jobs. Uh, and I bring this up because this is where the, the nexus between workforce development and economic development happens. Um, it's, the, it's the connection or the convergence between regional prosperity and income mobility. To make this work, 
we have to accomplish at least three things. One is we have to better calibrate supply and demand. Each region, that's on camera, of course, <laughs> uh, just to throw you off. Each region of the state has uh, one or more industry sectors that drive regional employment. So California is not a monolithic economy. It's a bunch of regional economies that often compete globally. So each region has one or two sectors that are really driving regional employment. Smaller, medium-sized companies tend to cluster around, uh, around those sectors. So we have to do a better job in calibrating supply and demand, meaning connecting education and training uh, and workers and students to pathways uh, to those industry sectors and those employers and those industries that are driving regional employment. Uh, and this means uh, deep employer engagement and employer investment, something we don't normally talk about. Employer investment in uh, work-based learning, uh, formalized apprenticeship, earn and learn models, on-the-job training, uh, paid internships. Uh, we also have to create uh, markets for these products that are, if you're thinking about skill sets as commodities or products in the labor market that have, uh, have demand, uh, we've got to make sure that we're creating the markets among employers regionally for skills credentials, for the products that our schools and our training and education system are actually producing. Without the market, uh, we uh, provide people, award them with certificates. If there's no value in the labor market, they won't connect to jobs. Uh, the second thing is skills credentials are a great proxy for income mobility and employment outcomes, but they have to be, uh, again, valued in the market by employers that are driving regional employment. And third, we need to more efficiently work with, with companies that are driving regional employment to, to achieve scale. We can't have uh, a multitude of programs and funding streams across the state and in Sacramento uh, all trying to go it alone. We have to have some comprehensive approach to providing skills, developing talent uh, for those industry sectors that are, again, driving regional employment. Uh, we've got to come together as a single voice uh, in our public education training system. It's too fragmented. It's too siloed. It needs to come together. Uh, so Governor Brown's, as Brian said, uh, Governor Brown's budget lays out a comprehensive workforce framework. It's important because it's directing state agencies and state departments to work together break down the silos and achieve some uh, high level of, of alignment uh, and scale, the, uh, both in Sacramento at the regional level. The framework, as Brian pointed out, includes a prominent role for the state workforce plan that's required by the new Federal Opportunity Act, coordination around industry sectors uh, driving regional employment, and quality skills training, apprenticeship, work-based learning, uh, earn and learn models that lead to industry-valued credentials. Uh, the framework isn't a finished product. We, we have an opportunity and a great deal of work to, to do, rolling up our sleeves collectively in Sacramento, uh, to flesh out uh, the details of impl implementing the framework through our state strategic plan and through the local and the regional planning processes. So implementation, uh, and I'll, I'll finish up very quickly, implementation is on, on two parallel tracks. There's a Sacramento strategy uh, and a regional strategy. In Sacramento, the capital strategy, Secretary Lanier and the chair of the State Workforce Investment Board, Michael Rossi, are ensuring a high level of coordination among the state agency secretaries, uh, Chancellor Harris, the superintendent, and the State Board of Education. Uh, as Brian pointed out, the Opportunity Act Implementation Committee, uh, staffed by the State Workforce Board, is doing uh, department level uh, coordination among the various departments who have federal and state funding streams that relate to employment services, education, uh, and training. Uh, the Department of Rehab, Social Services, um, the Employment Training Panel, EDD, the uh, Chancellor's Office, Division of Apprenticeship Standards, and, and other partners. That is the group that is currently now rolling up our sleeves and writing the new state strategic plan. Do we have a, an increasing skills and credentials work group that is working to kind of make some sense out of the wild west of credentials and certifications and licensing in the state? Uh, we've got to be uh, clear about what credentials and certifications that we award from colleges and, and training providers, community-based organizations and others, uh, have real demand uh, in the labor market, where there's an actual market for those products. The regional uh, or field strategy is, is very important. You could do all the, as you know, policy making in Sacramento. You could lay terrific groundwork in Sacramento. But implementation happens at the ground level where businesses are hiring and, and where people are looking for work. Uh, we have a, a an initiative called Slingshot, which is using Opportunity Act discretionary funds to, uh, as an organizing mechanism to bring together regional coalitions to solve big employment problems. Uh, it's not a new program. Uh, the idea is to put some dollars on the ground, 
to put existing resources to work in new ways to, to solve uh, uh, big employment problems and make big impacts. So this is really the organizing that brings the broader system of education, training, workforce, and economic development together uh, in response to uh, uh, industry sectors that are driving regional employment. Uh, we have also our unified local plans, as Brian pointed out, and our regional plans that aren't just about workforce boards, but about the broader system of education, employment services, regionally coming together around a common vision, common goals, outcomes, and metrics uh, so that the system is working in tandem toward accomplishing big uh, employment goals. Uh, and then finally, accelerator grants. The, uh, as I said, Slingshot is the organizing mechanism, sort of big picture to bring the partners together behind a common agenda. The accelerator, uh, again, is discretionary funds used to target specific populations to accelerate employment uh, among low-income adults, ex-offenders, at-risk youth, uh, individuals with disabilities, homeless, and other target uh, uh, populations with, with barriers to employment. Uh, there, again, the idea is not to create new programs, uh, but to fund innovations that, are, that tend to be on the margins uh, and to bring existing resources to work in different ways to help take those innovations, those great partnerships, those great ways of accelerating employment for ex-offenders, ex ex for example, and take it to scale and make it systematized and share that, uh, that good work across the state. Uh, that's the role of the accelerator grants. Uh, I wanted to touch real quickly on AB 2060, if I have a second. Uh, I bring up uh, AB 2060 because it's, we're using the accelerator model for the implementation of AB 2060. Uh, this is the bill last year that established the Supervised Population Workforce Training group, uh, Grant Program that took funds from the Recidivism mm -hmm. uh, Trust Fund, uh, a small amount of dollars, a million dollars, to target to building regional partnership around the uh, community corrections partnerships to build in the workforce and education component that was uh, not as emphasized in the initial uh, uh, AB 109 legislation. So we are going to use the, the 2060 funds, again, to target existing mature uh, partnerships among parole, probation, courts, uh, mental health, uh, community colleges and workforce boards to accelerate employment for ex-offenders. Ex and uh, we're building this around, the same as the principles I talked about earlier, industry sectors that are driving regional employment, career pathways that, that through uh, work-based learning and on-the-job training and, and apprenticeship that connect uh, these participants directly to actual jobs with, with, with good employers uh, for good pay uh, and long-term career viability. Um, I could talk more about the specific, specifics of the grant if you wish, but I probably should, should stop there. Why don't I, uh, we have a few minutes and I wanted to uh, see if any of the members of the committee had any technical questions or any of the uh, issues that you've pointed out. I'll start on my right and see if uh, we've got about five minutes and we can kind of go over some questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Question for you. How, how do you identify those individuals um, coming out and how are you identifying uh, those individuals, communities that which need this kind of training and also resources? Uh, I know we're dealing with the recidivism those are being released, um, but all, it's a two-part question. How are you identifying those individuals and what communities? And then the second question is, how are you identifying those individuals who have not been incarcerated, who has not gotten caught up in the justice system, but also still need a job and still need resources that you know, these kinds of programs provide? 